Today I'm going to try something quite new, something quite more interactive, which will involve me helping one of you to program a song in an ample sound instrument. All right, so today I'll be helping a songwriter from Sketch Republic. Long story short, she was born in Praga, but lives now in France. And she has been using AG Amal 2 for quite a while now. And she did a pop track with it, uh, which has, to my opinion, a lot of potential. But she requested a bit of assistance to use Strummer. So we had a quick conversation and here's what she sent to me. Okay, so what do I think? Well, first, it's a really nice chord progression. Uh, B minor, G major, D major, and A major. That is like a never failed chord progression. You'll find those chords everywhere in pop music, in reggaeton, in electronic music, and so on and so on. So that's a very good starting point. Second thing she did really well was the strummer to MIDI programmation. And I explained myself here. If we have a quick look at the MIDI file, she has drawn a C3 for measure number one, C sharp three for measure number two, D sharp three for measure number three, and she came back to a C3 for measure number four. And if we come back to the plugin, the pattern progression goes like this, measure number one, measure number two, measure number three, and measure number four. And as you can see, the root notes are placed differently on each pattern which is really well done. Why? Because the pattern always involve the root note of the chord, but then the root note is not necessarily played on the same exact string all the time. So she was really careful with that. For example, the root note of the B minor is played on the fifth string. So she said to Stroma, hey, there you must play string number five. But when she plays a G major, which has its root note played on string number six, she opened a second pattern window and she said to Stroma, hey, now play that root note on string number six. So that was really well done. But now it's time for me to have a critical opinion on what she did and maybe pinpoint the moments where I would do a bit differently to make it sound more realistic. So that's what we're going to do right now. So the first little comment I had to share is, though I'm totally okay with the first measure, I'm not really convinced by the second measure. Why? Because, you know, when it switches from the B minor to the G major, it sounds a bit empty. Like, check it out. So yeah, something is missing right here. The G major sounds too soft, too empty. And that is because when you use the downstroke treble sequence, you do not pluck all the strings of the selected chord, like it is shown here on the screen. If I click on the downstroke treble sequence, Ample Sound shows you that it does not ring all the notes of the G major. There you can see the difference on the two fretboards. It does not ring the last note, which is a G3. And for that reason, the song is loose losing its balance. So what we want to do is to increase the number of notes strummed by the downstroke, okay? We want to catch all the notes of the G major. One solution would be to increase the velocity of the downstroke, but then it will sound super weird. So the only thing we can do is to open a new track, load your ample sound instrument, open a MIDI file and add manually a G3 note uh, right where uh, when the other plugin is playing that downstroke treble sequence, which occurs at position 2.1.3, 2.2.3, 2.3.3 and 2.4.3. We must not forget to activate palm mute mode and what's going to happen is that whenever the first AG Amal 2 plays the G major, the second plugin is going to play that note that we were needing, okay, the G3. So let's hear the song again. Okay, my next advice would be, though I have no problem at all with the pattern structure, which is a classic, like root note, downstroke, root note, downstroke, really good, but I'm feeling like it's a bit too mechanical, like not played by a human. So I'm going to add little details that will make it sound more realistic. And that is what we're going to do right now. So I'm not going to change the first pattern, but I may do something on the second pattern. 
a little bit earlier I said that it sounded a bit mechanical. So what we can do is to add more sequences right here at the end of the measure. Instead of two sequences, root note and downstroke, we'll have four sequences, root note, upstroke, downstroke, and upstroke again. And let's listen to that. Okay, so it sounds already better, but I'm still not convinced. And if you have watched my other videos on how to play with an ample sound instrument, you'd know that something that makes it quite more realistic is to juggle between the palm mute mode and the sustain mode. And that is exactly what we need to do right here. So every sequences of the strumming pattern are programmed in palm mute mode, but that upstroke should be played in sustain mode. So I'm going to close the plugin, go back to my MIDI clip, and you can see that the palm mute mode is activated, okay? She drew, a, she drew a DO at the start of the clip. And at position 2.4, we are going to switch playing modes from palm mute mode to sustain mode. So I'm drawing a CO right here and a DO at position 2.4.3. Now I'm coming back to the plugin and what she did, is, what we did is that we indicated to Ample Sounds that every sequences of the pattern are played in palm mute mode, okay, every sequences but that one, that upstroke is played in sustain mode. Now I'm going to decrease the velocity to say 40 so we keep a good balance in the sound dynamics and let's listen to the track again. <laughs> And you see with a tiny mode switch, suddenly we have like a lot of realism. And now let's try to do a chord switch and a mode switch at the same time. In the chord bank, I'm going to add an A suspended 4 in slot number 5. And in the pattern bank, I'm going to open pattern number 4. Pattern number 4 will be triggered at measure number 4. So I go to the MIDI clip and I draw an F sharp 3 to trigger the new pattern. Now I go back to the plugin, I want to import everything from pattern number one and what I want to do is to tell AGML2 to switch chords and switch modes when it plays these two sequences which will be respectively played at position 4.3.3 and 4.4.4. So I'm going back to my MIDI clip, I go to position number 4.3.3 and I drew a CO to switch modes from palm mute mode to sustain mode and an E1 to program the chord switch because the E1 note triggers chord number five, which is the A suspended four we added a little bit earlier. And now at position 4.4.3, I'm going to draw a D sharp one because I want the guitar to come back to the initial chord, which is an A major. Now come back to the plugin, decrease the velocities of the two sequences that you know are suddenly played in sustain mode, so we want them a bit uh, softly and maybe add a little upstroke right here. And here we go. Now that's it for this week's video, I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Then if you want me to review your project, uh, then you can email me at williamnolens uh, at gmail.com and you can send me the ample sound and MIDI files that you are working on. So the only thing I'd ask in return is, you know, when I'm like releasing songs with my band, which will happen in next September 2019, then maybe you'll be interested in sharing those songs on your social media pages so like you will help us to get a contract with the label. Now do not stop here, if you are a beginner you'd be interested in watching that video which will teach you how to strum an ample sound VST while that video will provide you with free samples on how to write finger picking songs. You can also subscribe to the channel and well see you next time. <laughs>